Yes, it is my pleasure to introduce Sam Cheng. Um, he's in the uh, department, he's a distinguished uh, professor of mathematics and statistics at San Diego State University, and also has a visiting research appointment uh, as a mathematician at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Um, Sam had really many visiting positions. I was impressed uh, in Canada at the NASA Goddard uh, Space Flight Center in Tokyo. Um, and he has uh, um, filed patents, which is something we often don't do in the atmospheric sciences, but it's quite common in other um, uh, scientific and technical um, uh, departments. And uh, uh, I has, he has published three books and uh, over 100 research papers in top journals. Um, Sam, I'm looking very forward to your talk. Well, thank you, Judith, for your introduction. <laughs> I'm not uh, an only mathematician here. We have quite a few good mathematicians here, like uh, Anish himself, Matt, Chidong. <laughs> so uh, when I learned a lot from Anish when uh, he was at uh, uh, Scripps. Uh, so Anish asked me to talk about some statistics tools and uncertainty. That's the title of my lecture. Uh, so I like to discuss the following. I put uh, statistic, uh, put a big data in front of statistics, just try to be modernized myself. <laughs> and so where's the first topic? I will select uh, uh, three topics. And that's on the data delivery and data visualization and, and code and reproducible results. And I will talk about correlation regression. And then for uncertainty, I'd like to discuss about the error estimation and uh, such a technical issues on data simulation. I'd like to start with uh, Chidong's uh, slides. Uh, I really like that. Uh, Chidong said a few keywords here that you know the good framework uh, should be, he said must be <laughs> mathematically expressed. I like that because uh, you, it's, uh, the hand wave in time is gone. So we really need to be, uh, our field has become a quantitative field. And our results now is not just as this pattern looks like that pattern and need to be uh, testable against observations using scale scores. So this, uh, the predictions uh, should be quantitative. And that means they're all supported by data. And so my first topic is about uh, called four-dimensional visual delivery of big climate data. And we call it four DVD. So a DVD you know, you used, you know, is a machine to, to play music and uh, a, a disc. And so for DVD is a software. So DVD is hardware, for DVD is a software. And so uh, the interface looks like this. And I'm gonna show a couple of examples and I'll give you a, a very quick demo. So like uh, for instance, at uh, one spot, and so you click on spot, so this is like uh, a, a San Diego area. And this is a, a 20th century real analysis, this uh, model results. So you click on that spot, you can get time series, you can get uh, time series at different levels. Uh, this altogether has 24 levels for real uh, for this uh, 20th century real analysis data. And then you can get the time series all the way from uh, 1851. And then you can download the data, you can compute the trend, you can do all kinds of statistical calculations with that. And then you, know, you can also look at uh, dynamics if you use it for dynamic analysis. For instance, you can look at uh, the V range, but also from this uh, 20th century real analysis uh, 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 example. And so you can see the ITCZ, uh, and you can see Hadmi cells. But when you see the Hadmi cell, you know that this, the real Hadmi cell is not the same as what you see in the textbooks. Because textbooks, those are hand-waving 
uh, schematic diagrams. It looks so nice, but actual ones, even though it's a long time average, it's not as nice. It varies from place to place. So here, let's go to that. Uh, uh, look at the example. If you have a computer in front of you, and you do, uh, you can just do this, just do 4dvd.org. So www.4dvd.org, you'll get this. You get this, and you, know, you, can, you can rotate this and see different spots, and you can see different areas. So uh, then you can zoom in and zoom out. So zoom in, zoom out, and do all kinds of things. So like if you click someplace like San Diego or Colorado, so just click a spot, and then we'll get that spot. You get this, this appears this time series. You click on time series, and then you get uh, this time series, and then you can get different uh, height levels. And say, for instance, this 500, and then you know, say, 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 like somewhere like 200, and then you get to even higher, and all those things. And then you can do some calculations. For instance, like you'd say, well, just uh, you look at, uh, for instance, like you say, statistic summaries. Think that as they say, is uh, minimum uh, percentiles 25, 50, mean 75, standard deviations, variance, skewness, and uh, ketosis, etc. And so you can. Uh, you can also look at, uh, you know, for the general public, some people may want to look at, uh, say, uh, uh, some, uh, you know, general climatology. And also you look at, this is a, the green is general the climatology, and the red one is historical high. And then the blue one is historical low. And so this is something that is very good for your classroom teaching. Uh, and then if you like the data, you, make it, you, uh, you can say, I want to download the data. So the data will come to you right away, right away. I mean, no, no, no waiting time. So you get it, you get it instantly. And so that is, and then the students can play with the data, you know, use R or Python or even Excel itself to play with the data. And, and there is histogram, et cetera, because this is data. Okay, so you get this, uh, you get a, the time, time and the data and that you do the longitude, et cetera. So, and then, then you can, you know, if you say, I like the map, this map data, and the map, it can be in different shape too. You can get a map into like, uh, uh, you know, you can change it to uh, like, just regular map, two dimensional map like this. Or you can get different color, all kinds of, you can put a, a bottom topography, the mountain, you know, all kinds of things in the river, lake, uh, so all kinds of options. Color, you can use all kinds of colors. And so, and, and then you say, well, I like this data, and then you can just download the data for this map. So that is you know, something you like, and you can just download there. Instead of downloading like, you know, several hundred gigabytes of real analysis data, and you get something what you want right away. And how can that be done so fast? It's because three technologies. One is optimization of a database. And one is uh, distributed computing. And one is the fast query uh, into the system. So we have that kind of design. So that means all this, uh, this what you have seen, is done on your computer, not on service computer. So that makes it really fast. And so let's get back to this, uh, uh, this uh, PowerPoint slides. So, and then, you know, this looks uh, a pretty uh, 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 useful tool for data visualization and delivery. And you know what? What we are, uh, you know, we're continuing developing this, and 
it's because we have, we have, we have a lot several people work on this for many years. And we started we started working on this in 2012, first released in 2016. And currently we have like uh, four people working on that. And so we're doing like uh, putting a bit more, we want to beautify this sense, you know, like put a light mode, day mode kind of thing. Just like now school, you know, many of you have uh, seen that one. So beautiful. And uh, what's the difference between ours and, and other products? Because we have uh, data manipulation functions. We actually do it as a data machine. And a quick just say, well, I want to use that. And I have my own data. I, don't, I want to quickly use this as a tool, just like use this as, such as the Polopony or, or AeroView or those things. I want to produce a beautiful figure. And uh, we want to say, we want to quickly, you can use our machine to produce your data instead of, you know, we, we mount this data for you. And then we will want to have a different map of projections. Uh, we have, uh, you know, there's two kinds of selection. So we have three kinds of selections. We're going to have more selections. And then we're going to do some cross-sectional maps to do the diagnostics. And we want to do more space-time maps to show the wave propagation. And particularly, this will be useful for S2S when we look at daily data. And we want collaboration with you. you know, one model of collaboration is the simple one is that you have data and we deliver it for you. We visualize it for you. For instance, if we have say one of the same map models and we put it for put it on for you. And other uh, collaboration model would be like we customize our 4 DVD for your data set. Uh, for instance, like uh, this is the example we did with uh, uh, Donata, Donata, thank you. Your presentation talked about it <laughs> in this lecture. Uh, it's uh, Argo Vis. So this started in 2017 when we, uh, uh, Donata and I put together this uh, a statistics workshop at SIO. And then so, so we found there is a match here. And so we did, the, did this, uh, this the Argo Vis uh, machine. And uh, so that was the, a master thesis by uh, Tyler Tucker. So he was uh, in the in the uh, in, in my lab, and uh, he he was interested in the Dolores data, and then so so he produced this wonderful tool for climate uh, for ocean scientists. And so I think Dolores, you probably can tell more. And then the, we were talking about to get a, a, a school kids to adopt. Uh, Argo buoys and uh, using this machine, sort of say, this is my buoy, a kid, and they can track where, 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 it, where it is and what does the data look like? You know, a person can start his kind of own, uh, you know, a web uh, Twitter or those kind of things, uh, social, social media, and to get the science to the, to the general community, to the to general public. So there are many other uh, products out there uh, the, in the world. And uh, so, you know, data visualization, you know, this, this, this is a big deal. So many people getting into it. And so you could see that, you know, now school, perhaps that is the, uh, the one, the best known to people. Yeah, so beautiful to see this, uh, this, uh, you know, when you see this, uh, you know, the, the blocking, you can see the blocking right there, so nicely. And, uh, but, but NASCO cannot do data service. So, and, uh, and uh, we, uh, you know, they have their kind of a strength and uh, we do our own sense. What our focus is on data delivery and then uh, data visualization. So we actually want users to play with data. And so, so our uh, main, you know, our, one of our main uh, audience is uh, for for school kids, for classroom use, and there are many others, you know, like Climate Engine, Google Earth Engine, etc. Those are all good stuff. And we have one right at Colorado, you know, this right uh, uh, read. Read is a Colorado product, right? So it's a very, but those that read is more for scientists. A high school kid probably cannot play with it. Now so, each one has its own use. Right? And the other tool is that we uh, uh, 
incorporate, we incorporate uh, for DVD with the, a, a book in climate mathematics. And so, uh, so that, you know, we have this, this data, you use the time series data or you get this map data. And then you say, I want to replay with it. I want to have my own customization. customization. So you can, you know, we provide a, a, a list of standard uh, data analysis tools in the book. Python, so we have the Python code and we have the uh, uh, R code. And that is, uh, is, is for students to use as, as like uh, uh, a reference menu, you know, for lab, you know, your lab, you can see this, this, is the, this will be the, the resources from the book. So you can get a computer code, you can get, get uh, the, and there is a YouTube tutorial of R and, and Python. And also we have the data set, you can download the data set like letter CDF, you know, all kinds of things. And, and then you can, uh, so, so the, every figure in the book can be reproduced uh, by a user instantly in the in classroom or when students doing homework. And so we think that this book uh, provides a, a good way to train climate science students uh, with useful mathematics. We call it useful mathematics. Often, you know, we learned mathematics in, 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 in college. And often our math professors told us, math is so beautiful. And then tell you that math is useful, but the, but the professor would never tell you a useful mathematics example. So for instance, you never learned how to compute EOFs from your math professor, but that probably is the first thing you will get when you go to uh, work at the professor's uh, lab. And also professors got frustrated in the sense that when students come in, so they feel you know, they feel like they have obligation to provide a senior student to tell the junior students, say, how to use this software, that software, this plotting, that data, et cetera. And uh, what we try to do here is that we want to train students in the undergrad stage with linear algebra, statistics, calculus, et cetera, and plotting and coding, so that students will be able to, uh, will be ready to do uh, research at the senior year or at master level or at entry PhD level, or going to work and they, they, they can use this to get a good job. Okay. And this is another one is outreach. So uh, this summer just just done last just uh, last month. So so we were training uh, teachers, local uh, school teachers, and to use for DVD and R. So the kids are very much interested in climate change, but if you you get them to get a climate data, and you must be easy and fast and also funny, interesting. And so they can enjoy it. If you, you know, so go to uh, NOAA Climate Data Online, you can find this, that, that. And then they spend five minutes, they're sticking out, find it, and they say, what the hell, I'm not going to do. So, uh, this is the, the teachers have found, they really like it. You know, a lot of the figures are from the book, they reproduce that. So those figures, they, they produced it, you know, so. And, and then uh, let's do, uh, let's to jump to this uh, it's, uh, uncertainty, and uh, so, the, so there's two there's tools, and then let's look at this uncertainty. And so one example of this is called spectral optimal average, and for the for the for uh, you know so the question is this you ask this way if you have stations in different spots, and then you find the regional average, and then you say how good it is what is it what is error. Okay. And then you know that this, it depends on three things. One is the location, different, you know, which spots they are, geometry. Another one is the, how good is your observation, your observational data, you know, the, the instrument, are they bad or good? Third thing, related to climate and dynamics, ocean will be different from land, desert will be different from the, you know, from the forest areas. So, so how could we 
have a formulation that would incorporate all the three together. You know, we learned uh, objective analysis that often is like you, you incorporate the first one and the second one. So, so, so often it's the first one, okay? And sometimes you consider the second one. And then we found out that in our objective analysis uh, uh, learning, the error analysis part often is not very useful. Uh, and then the result tend to be quite useful, but the, the error part is basically totally, totally useless. So often you see the publications when using objective analysis, objective analysis they don't use the, the error estimation from the objective analysis mathematics. Rather, they use the error from cross-validation. Uh, so that basically they use one theory to get a result, and they use another theory to do the, uh, to do the, to do the error assessment. Okay. And there are many publications, and I learned this method from Jerry North, and I learned a lot from Tom Smith, and Tom works at NOAA also. And so we did uh, uh, quite a few papers in early uh, 1990s. Uh, I, uh, I started this with Jerry and working on the, the satellite error, the trim error, trim satellite uh, observational error. And then we worked with, uh, at CPC, I was, uh, I was working there. And, and, and then with, uh, with Tom Schmier, Spiak, and Chad Robiewski, and try to answer the question for, 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 the, uh, for WMO, is that why is that where should we if we only have 50 some some uh, uh, stations around the globe where should we put them and this you heard is the angio cultural over network another one would be that it is for the global warming assessment what are the error bonds you know what is error bonds so in 2001 ipcc and we quantified the error bonds by this method so what that is? <laughs> this is a kind of headache uh, mathematics. Uh, but what is this? This incorporates this, all the three things. So one is that's location. So this is location, so the location called RI. And phi, uh, per, C, per C is the empirical orthogonal functions. And this, uh, this lambda is the eigenvalue of that empirical orthogonal function mode. And, and then this is data error part. So this is data itself has error. So you have data error, location, and then climate dynamics. So all these three things put together, you get into this. Uh, so this, there is, you know, this is the, the way. Uh, so, so what is the main, main principle? The principle is, is really a regression, minimization of mean square error, okay? So, and then you can extend this concept to ask other questions. Suppose that you have scattered observations, you want to grid your data to, you know, the, the, to, to the to grid boxes, and, and then you know, what will be errors on each grid? So this becomes the error mapping problem. So you produce a, 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 a reconstructed data, uh, and then you want you, you at the same time you should also uh, produce a uh, uh, error map uh, together with it, okay. and and then you know when we when you do forecast same thing, so you, you we have done a few uh, S two S uh, prediction with Tom Schmitz, and so so we want to produce uh, this error map. So that theory was uh, established in 2001, when I was a, a visitor at uh, Goddard uh, Space and Flight Center with BLR's group. So Bill directed me to work on this. Bill, I remember when I went there in 1999 as a, as a, as a, uh, 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 as a visitor, uh, as NRC uh, uh, visiting scientist, visiting scholar, and he, he taught me, said, said well, you know, you probably are good at math, but I want you to work on something useful. <laughs> so, just like uh, this morning's uh, uh, talk by Ndibi said that, you know, 
there's uh, computer scientists. They might be smart, but they, they, they work on different scales, different signals. <laughs> so, so, so I learned a lot from Bill on this. And this is a, a, a slide that's really interesting to me. And uh, Antia uh, talked about this, how we could um, uh, misunderstood uh, or misuse uh, correlation. Okay? And so if you just look at correlation or standard deviation, that's not enough. And so, so often we often have that problems. Many papers published have this kind of errors that mean wrong. So what happened is not because regression is wrong. It's not because the uh, uh, correlation is wrong. It's because we have not checked assumptions. So what are these assumptions? This, this Four assumptions in the, in the, in the, in the linear regression, we, we took a statistics course on this. So why is a linear model? Well, everybody agree with that. Yes, there is such a thing. Otherwise, wouldn't, we wouldn't do it. Okay. Then the second one is that the model data and the error data both need to be normally distributed. And that we need to test that. Third is that the, the residuals should not vary too much. So there's pretty much constant variance with respect to X. And then the independence of the errors. The resi residuals should not have serial correlation. And uh, this is called, there is a thing called a building Watson test. And uh, the number four is the most error, is the most error people uh, may have made in publications. And they just say, oh, this is a degrees of freedom. But actually, because of serial correlation, the degrees of freedom become much less, the error become much bigger. And there's nothing new. It's all new textbooks, it's except that those textbooks are hard to understand. There's so much mathematics. So they don't talk about physics. So in, in our climate math book, we say that every uh, important math formula must have a climate science example. And every uh, important uh, climate science uh, description must have a mathematical description. Sam, so, you have about five minutes. Yeah, no, I'm Thank done. You. Yeah, good. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. So, uh, so this is another example here is uh, from Sergey's uh, uh, presentation. And you know, this, uh, this, we all know this, uh, data assimilation. You know, all, all this, this formulation is familiar to everyone here. Uh, so uh, uh, so there, there are some of the, the minus sign, equal sign from Sergey's uh, 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 slides. Those, the copy, his copy uh, missed this, uh, the signs. So I, I, did, I could not reproduce that. But so it's a lot, some place it has inverse metrics, et cetera. And so this will be, uh, so key part is here. He was so good point out to people so that this, there is R matrix is observational error. And there is a P matrix is forecast error. Those two matrices are not known. You need to assume them or you need to compute them. And in data, data assimilation, often people don't tell you this. This is my data assimilation results. They don't tell you this. And, and, and Sergey is really good and tell you, you know, the trick inside there. And what is the uncertainty? How sensitive is the result to this? And I like uh, another uh, uh, lecture by uh, Haim uh, Kim is on the predictability and what it is. Uh, of course, many people talk about it. There was a huge discussion on this, huge debate. Right? And so here, we, we, I look and say, what, what, what does the dictionary say? Well, Cambridge says that, you know, that saying is probably not what we want. And there is a definition, .NET, and the Wikipedia, that is the second one. That probably is what we want. But how do we quantify this? Uh, you know, correlation, heat scores, like two size scores, quantized scores, and IMSEs, cross validations, and a very important part, reproduce reproducible results. We need to reproduce our results. So, so this is the reproducible, like this is the, the, the papers and some journals are in this trend now. So this is the one example is, the, uh, this, uh, is uh, the PNAS paper 
And you know, the, the share with all the data, all the code, you, the, the reader can reproduce everything very easily. And there's uh, the ESSD uh, journal actually require you to do that. Okay, so we recently put a paper there. And, and then also another way to help us to understand the uh, paper better is that nowadays, particularly with machine learning, we put flow chart. Flow chart is really good for, uh, for, for, uh, for people to understand your work. So, so we, you know, NCAR has that, the big flow chart program chart. And for each program, each one, you, you, each product has a sub flow chart that makes your result reproducible. So summary uh, and take home uh, messages. And so I have four things, you know, one is for DVD, one is a book, and one is a correlation. Well, how do you deal with the correlation? Always plot, schedule diagram, always do that. And uh, reproducible results. So you need, um, you know, I suggest that we all uh, 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 produce the open source code and data so that others can reproduce our results. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks very much, Sam. Um, I, I, uh, I was especially pleased that you uh, talked about how important it is to have serial correlations. Um, and one comment I have to this, this plot you showed about, um, and also Antje showed is the stochastic differential equation community. There's a big thing that you want to get first and second order statistics right, but also, um, lag time correlations. And a lot of these um, uh, misunderstandings or um, uh, go away once you look at at, um, at least one time lag, ideally more than one. Uh, and that gives you a lot of insights about linearity and nonlinearity as well. Um, my question for you, Sam, is um, what do you think right now, given that this is sort of an S2S science, the summer colloquium, which area do you think the mathematical sciences and, and doing really, you know, math approaches will be most beneficial in advancing our understanding about s science? Well, I think Anibis uh, talk actually answer your question really is to explore the inside of machine learning. I fear the machine learning is a way. Our group is doing that. Actually, I was going to present some machine learning results from deep ocean. And really, we find physics to support your, you know, the, 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 uh, what do you want to get? And then you, you, you try to find the, the, the proper tool. And then you need, need to understand the tool. And, you know, we often think that machine learning is a black box, but it's not. Actually, it's built upon this, uh, uh, this logistic uh, regression. That means it's just like our, our mind, you say, this is red, this is black, there is a threshold. And so there is that kind of uh, 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 mathematics and that should be explicitly researched and step-by-step, step. maybe put that example step-by-step, but step. each step has the mathematical criteria. That's, I would think, the most important part. <laughs> Thanks so much.